Hello again. Whew, that was a big lab if you did it all. So these are the range calls that I use to produce these numbers. I suspect that you worked on your ranges until you got them right. But you might not. In order to produce this 12, you might not have used a 13, you might have used a 14, and it would have worked just the same. I prefer to use one number more than I want, even when there's a big range of numbers that I could use, like here. You might have found this blast off program to be a little bit more challenging. You had to start at 10 and go down to 1, going backwards with the minus 1. And then you print that count. And because we didn't want it to print out one number per line, we had to add end equals just a space. Then we have those spaces. When we're all done, we print blast off. And that's how we produce that. Now, sometimes a student will say, we'll put that print blast off in the for loop and say, if count equals one, blast off. And the output looks the same, but it's much slower. And also, it's not as logical for the person who reads your code. So when you have something that only happens once, it does not belong in a loop. Next, you might have produced these pep boys. These are the pep boys, if you know that. Manny, Mo, and Jack. Here I have a tuple of the three. You may have put round braces around them. And I would agree with you if you said, well, that's more readable. Yep, I can't argue with that. You might have put square bra braces around them. Any reason at all. They both look better than this. But I like to do this because I like to point out that the sequence which is either a tuple or a list. It's the commas that make a big difference. That means this is a sequence. OK, so then we print hiya. We say the name, and we do a plus exclamation. Now, if you put an exclamation point under uh, at the end of each of these names, that's not a good idea, because you have duplicate data. Actually, you have triplicate data. And if the boss asks you to put in double exclamation points, you have to do it three times, and that's air prone. Similarly, the Haya ought not be in there, because he might change the language to Ola. So you want to avoid duplicate anything ever. It's always a trap for yourself. Well, maybe you had the time and energy to do 20 underscore 5, where you made this Christmas tree pattern of stars. I'll show you how I did it. If you did it in a way that is more readable, you did a better job. If you did it in a way that is less readable, more compact, not a good idea in Python. You're going for readability. Alrighty, so on this first line, we have 18 blanks. That's why that says 18. And we have one star. So we print that many blanks. Here we are. We know that the times produces 18 of those. And the stars, which is one, is going to produce one of those, which is a star space. That's preparing for the next time around. Our blanks are going down by two and our stars are going up by two. So then we have three stars and two fewer blanks, etc. And we go around a total of 10 because that's how many rows there are. Okay, that was just some extra practice. Here again is some more practice, 26. I gave you a binary string, meaning that it only has ones and zeros in it. I don't think the specification tells you to check to be sure that's true, or maybe did I? No, I don't think so, because you don't know how. But I know how, then I'll show you just so you see how marvelously readable Python is. First, I'm printing that string, 1011, without going to the next line. Now then, I have a string. 
If I for loop through my string, this identifier takes on one character at a time. It is so intelligent, this for loop. It unwraps this object, whatever it is. It must be something iterable. Big word, iterable. To work in a for loop, and then it gives you one at a time of whatever that is. So here we get one character at a time. If that character is not in that string. Now here you see we have the in keyword, and that in keyword does a loop in the background in compiled C very fast. So it's looking for CH in that string of 0, 1, and if it's not in there, we'll say it's not a binary string, and when we break, we're done. We were given bad data. But if we get all the way through this for loop, then we go through the else. If the for loop ends naturally, we go in the else. No flag needed. And then we do our algorithm to find the integer base 10 that it stands for. And here I'm doing it. I don't even want to think about it. That's too hard. The easy way, the Pythonic way, is to know that the int built-in function, or really a class, you give it the string you want it want to have interpreted as an integer, but you can, if you wish, give a second argument, and that's the base in which to interpret it. Whenever in Python you find yourself doing something tedious and difficult that probably a jillion other programmers have done, you might want to take a step back, maybe go search on the internet and look for it to be already done for you. Okay, that's it for your second lab. Good for you. See you next time.